This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're, we're in a Russian bathhouse in London, very random. I'm joined by Derek Tizora. Derek, thank you for inviting me here. I feel like I completed half the task today, but not the rest. You did well, you did well. You did well. You seem disappointed I didn't come for round two. Yeah, I'm very upset because... I want them to beat you up with their lives. They beat you up in there like a runaway slave. <laughs> but it was good though. They're good guys here. Yeah. It's quite cool. I enjoy it. Well, I can safely say I've never been in a Russian bathhouse. So thank you very much for the experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a good experience. It's great. You know, it's one kept secret. That's the best top secret they kept in Russia for themselves. You know, I enjoy it. Well, thank you to Banya for their hospitality here. Um, Derek, let's kind of jump straight into it. Um, Saturday night, um, obviously on paper you've suffered a second defeat to Joseph Parker. Uh, the feedback since that fight, um, all the headlines, uh, all the talk has still been about you, regardless of whether you won or lost. It's always say it's it's been about you. So difficult to digest the defeat or or not. Not really. You know, uh, first of all, I have to say thank you to everybody who came to uh, to Manchester. Um, you know, great fight, great undercard. Um, you know, the whole production was great. You know, a bit nervous because those of things were being cancelled, the football games. You know, people are paranoid about this. Omicron, is it Omicron, Corona? Um, so it's just people don't want to, like, come out. And then suddenly get sick and they'll go spend Christmas with their loved ones. Like, because last year we did, nobody spent Christmas with nobody. Do you understand? So this year was, this year was going to be different, but they're trying to make it harder for us. So it was quite difficult, you know, for the last four days. It was like, oh, Jesus Christ, what day is it? Wednesday, Thursday, and then you're like, oh, Friday. Let's just hope nobody in the team got corona or anybody around us getting sick. So the fight will be cancelled. But it won't, fight, fight was great. The whole build up, everything was just great. I enjoyed it. Just talking about your own performance, um, you know, you said beforehand that you felt like you would have to knock him out um, because of, in your opinion, how the first fight played out. You obviously believed you won the first fight. A lot of people did believe you won the first fight. Uh, no, he's, but won, he's won both fights, so I don't care. Move on. But from your own performance perspective, were you pleased ultimately with how you performed? Mm, it was okay. I I hate I hate to say this, yeah, I don't want to say it, but I have to say it now. Uh, on on Thursday, I think it was a Thursday or what? Last week Thursday, a week Thursday. I was in my garden. I slipped. Broke my hand, broke my baby finger. I was looking the other way around. Instead of it to be like this, I was looking that way. It was like a zigzag, and I put it back together myself. And then I phoned up, and then I had to like put injections in it, which I told the board. It was fine. You know, um, the fight itself was great. Joseph Parker boxed a great fight. You know, give a shout to Andy Lee. You know, he's um, made a great fight out of Joseph. You know, I think he'll do well. Um, you know, I, the whole build up, my training camp was well. And that was it. Can't say anything else. You know, they called to train me very well for that fight. Um, and uh, we lost the fight. So, in your opinion, as it's been a couple of days, obviously, since the fight, why, why didn't it quite click for you on, on Saturday enough for you to win? Did click for me, but it's lost the fight. You know what? What's there to to to, to make it click? <laughs> he boxed a better fight than me. That was it. There's nothing else to say. He won the fight. He didn't win it easily. It was not an easy fight for him to win. No, it was not. It's a hard fight for him to win. I've got to ask you about the scorecards because. A lot of people had something to say about the 114-112 scorecard. 
I, I wanted I want your opinion about yeah. that. So my fucking time, I guess, saying uh, boxing. <laughs> what was wrong with that? Listen, money been a knockdown, but all finished the rounds are stronger. You knocked me down with one punch, and then suddenly I came back with 45 punches. So what was the problem with that? Everybody's got opinion in boxing. You know, it's like everybody. Everybody's got opinion in boxing. Whose opinion is right? We don't know. Even to the judges, to the referee, everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got something to say. Did you deal with the the aftermath of this fight a lot easier than the first fight? I'm assuming you did. Listen, I've lost so many fights. I don't really care about them, to be honest. If I won so many fights, I don't really care. Don't care. Don't bother me. When people write things about me. I don't even read about it. Write good, write bad. I do not care. Do you understand? Most people care. Most people finish fights. And then they're on a the computer reading, oh, what did he say? What did, what did they say about me? I don't care, mate. Ask my team. After I left that ring, I was like, hmm, what's the next campaign? And then they clicked. Let's talk about that because regardless of obviously people talking about your performance, and I, I mean that, the, the headlines were kind of centred around you ahead of Joseph Parker despite you losing the fight. But there are a lot of people out there within boxing that believe that that should be your last fight and you shouldn't continue. I, I, want, I want you. You've seen this, Derek. If you've been on social media, no, you've seen this. Been. Well, I've seen, seen a lot of people say that now it's time for Derek to call it a day. So when I announce my next fight, tell them not to buy tickets and come watch it. So whoever wrote that, whoever said that, don't watch me fight next time. That is it. Don't bother tuning in or anything like that. Go away. We don't need your negative vibes here, mate. Is it negative vibes or is it their opinion that you've had that many hard fights, it hasn't always gone your way and they believe that the stage of your career now, that that should be it. Is that, is that not a fair opinion to them, if they believe that? So basically, we should, we should be like this. You should not do it because you, you can't do it because you're failing, because you should just forgive, you just forget about it. That's the problem with us in Britain. So we in a Premiership in a, in a Premier League. How many teams we got? Twenty. Mm, Twenty. And three of them are probably the best teams out there. So the rest shouldn't bother playing for it because they're not going to win, it, are they? Yeah, Blackburn, Tottenham. Uh, who else? Everton. Uh, Leicester, oh no, Leicester won it. Uh, who else? Oh, so the rest of the play, the rest of the football teams do not play for the Premier League anymore because you're not going to win it. That's it. Here's a question. Yes, yes, I'm going to say to you, all those people writing all that shit. Go fuck yourselves. Tell me to retire. No. If you don't want to come watch me, don't. I don't care. I know those who love me, they will come and watch. Those who want to feel sorry for me, don't feel sorry for me. Be happy for me because I'm happy. I'm living my best life right now. Do not feel sorry for me. I'm living my best life right now. I mean, what I'll say to that is, I remember speaking to you after Monaco, after your defeat to Caballero, and that was a, a good five years ago, four or five years ago, and people were suggesting the same thing now. Now, since that fight, you've been in numerous yeah, big that, fights. Yeah, that time I'd have said, you know what, you're right, I should retire because I'm a bum, I stink up the joint, I didn't box right, everything was not clicking, you know, um, I'm even embarrassed to say I've lost that fight, to be honest with you. That was not great. So I changed it. So is it a case of you will listen, fight? Lost, you will fight until you want to fight? No, no, listen. I lost the fight. Big deal. People lose and people win. That's it. It's the life we live in. That is it. What can we say? That's it. It's life. It's life. People, people, everybody's got something to say. Say it. 
People got things to say. People sit there and write about other people's mis mistakes and their career and stuff like that. Because they haven't got nothing better for themselves to do. I'm happy. Listen, I'm happy. I wake up in the morning. I brush my teeth. I get in my two-door smart car. I'm fucking living my best life right now. I come to Russian bathhouse. I... Uh, hang out with my family, I'm happy. Don't need anything else. I go to a gym, I'm happy, mate. Do you understand? Can I just offer a little counter to what you're saying here? I'm assuming the people that have an opinion about whether you should be retired or not are also concerned about health-wise that one day that you'll, if you feel like you're fighting past when you should stop, that you're going to get hurt. I will not fight until I'm 40. I'm still good in my 30s, so I'll do it. So is it a case of when I decide to stop, I'll stop? If not, I'll keep going? That's everybody wants to know, isn't it? Like, when is he going to stop? I don't know. When they're going to stop eating pussy and then I can stop fighting. <laughs> but I don't know yet. I'm still in the game. I like it. I enjoy it. I had this conversation with someone the other day and I said... You have conversation with everybody, don't you? Yeah, of course. You? But I said to them, as weird and as random and as unpredictable as Derek Tizora is, his brain is still intact. Like, it's not a case of you being kind of punchy, etc. Do, do you know why most people get punchy? It's not boxing what makes most fighters punchy. It's not the fight they have a fight in the ring. It's not. People get punchy when they do so many rounds of sparring. Do you know, pe people get punchy in the gym, not in the ring, not in the boxing ring. You know, they train hard, they're sparring a lot. You know, they feel like they haven't done enough sparring, so they put another 20 rounds on top of the 45 rounds they did. That's what hurts people. Not not the fighting game, not boxing alone, no. It's a sparring. It's what they do in the gym with their trainers. Not when a man walks in the ring and then he fights and he loses and he's like, oh, it's, it's, that's not well. No, it's a sparring, the way he's training his body and the way they're doing whatever they're doing in the gym. No, that's how, that's how you get fucked up. So... The summary of what you're saying there is basically that the sparring side of it is what you believe that takes its toll on a boxer's career, yes. hence the reason why people kind of are in the situations they are. But for you, it's not the case because your sparring isn't, isn't that, but obviously people are judging you on the numerous fights you've had over the last 10, 11, 12 years against some of the best heavyweights that there are still going today? I want to fight everybody. I want to fight everybody. <laughs> you put that tweet out straight away because everyone's kind of, I don't know what people expect after that, whether they're thinking you're going to say, oh, that's it, etc. Straight away you put, posted a picture out on your Instagram and you said, I'll see you next summer ready to go again, basically, not exact words, but that's what you were basically saying, that you're what ready to go again. What exactly did I say? Go on. I'll see you next, like, in the summer of 2022. Say exactly what I say. Well, I can't remember. I can get it up. Wait there, hold on. Let me get it up, and I'll actually, actually quote you on what you said. Oh, okay. Here we go. Sorry. I'm going to quote what you said now, because I've got it up now. Uh, Fuck retirement. I'll be back in the summer, bitch. <laughs> Damn right, bitch, I'll be back in the summer. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back in the summer. What, what's the motivation for you now, then? We've spoken about we've spoken about world titles. You've always dismissed that and said you're not interested. You've always said it is to do with money, but right now, at this stage of your career, what is the motivation for you to keep fighting? Just because you love fighting? Or is it because you've still got unfinished business in boxing? I just love it. I love it. I love the training, the fighting. I just love it. I, 
fucking enjoy it, man. I fucking love it. You don't understand. <laughs> I think people kind of understand. Don't with that. understand. No, they understand. They don't with understand. You don't understand. You don't understand the dream when I enjoy it. Do you understand? I ain't fucking enjoy it. I'm trying to explain to you guys who are going to be watching this bloody channel later. I fucking enjoy it. I love it. You don't understand how much I fucking love it. This is our point to a point blank. I love it so much. When he hit me, I went down. I'm like, bitch, this is it. Do you understand? This is it. This is all about. This is it. Fucking gave a hit, come back. This is the fucking is this. It's hard to explain, man, to those who don't understand. It's so hard to explain, man. I'm telling you, man. Fucking love it, man. I enjoy it. I fucking love it. Derek, let me ask you. Um, Eddie Hearn was asked a question in the post fight about potential with, and it's got people talking again, with you and Deontay Wilder. His quote was, I believe, um, if it goes past four rounds. Derek's got a very good chance of winning the fight, but he's got to get past them four rounds. I mean, people are talking about it. There's no suggestion of it happening at the moment, but Deontay Wilder, I'm sure you've, if you've been on social media over the last couple of days, you would have seen people talking about a potential fight with Deontay Wilder now. Have you seen that? And what are your thoughts about that? Coming to America. That's the next... That's the next uh, situation we're working on. Our next campaign, coming to America. I'll take that fine. You would take it? I've been having DMs in my phone. <coughs> These Americans, are just, they want me to come there. If I get a visa, though. I need a visa. Well, we don't know what the situation's going to be next year. Uh, yeah, but man, we, don't know. <coughs> we, we don't know. We we don't know. We are just living this life like, in a, in, we're just floating. Yeah, we're just floating. They're, clo they're closing us down. You can't go anywhere else. You need to be double jabbed. Triple jab soon. Triple jab, double jabbed. Uh, you know, people don't have enough money. People don't have money. You know, it's just, it's hard, man. It's bloody fucking hard. They're making it hard for us. Making it hard for anybody. What's the best place to go to now? Dubai. You know, four years ago, you go to Dubai with two grand and you live like a king. <laughs> now you go to Try Dubai. eight grand. <laughs> now, now you go to Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> you were eight grand, you don't believe like a king. You wake up in the morning and hit a buffet breakfast and then you have to eat so much that you don't have to have lunch <laughs> and come for dinner. You're not even ordering starters. You're just having dinner with, no, with fucking tap water because you don't want to buy Diet Coke or anything because it's too expensive. <laughs> I'm telling you, what's the point of going away? Come back. Being away for three weeks, you're done, you spunk your dough. And then suddenly you have to go back to work. Your mortgage, you have to pay your mortgage. Pay your, your water bill. bill. Your water mortgage, your water bill, your car, insurance, gas. All this shit piles up, bro. <laughs> That's why I said I'm not coming out my smart car. Stay in that bloody thing for a while, man. Derek, if um, if the opportunity presents itself next year, are you saying that there's a strong possibility that you will look to obviously have your next fight in America if obviously we don't know about restrictions, etc., and the possibility of doing that, but is that something that's on your radar that you will want to do is go out to America and kind of maybe do something out there? I think we all should move to America because America don't have a lockdown. America's got it right. They're not putting anybody in lockdown. Sway your mask and let's get triple jabbed and that's it, let's move on. 
Do you know what I feel sorry for right now? Our kids. Do you know that? Because by the time they get older and and this financial crisis we're going through, man, it's going to bankrupt lots of people, man. You're looking at your time because you have to rush home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. You're good. looking at your time. <laughs> You can go home, bro. It's fine. You can go home. Oh, you, oh Mrs. Calling you, bro. No, no. <laughs> no, that, no, no. My wife is calling you. <laughs> His wife is calling him. Hurry up, boy. You got it whipped, man. You got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, but listen. I just feel sorry for so many families out there, man. It's bad. It's so bad right now. And I feel sorry for everybody. I, I feel sorry for myself because of this situation we're in. You know, okay, go celebrate Christmas. After Christmas, lockdown. Families can't be together anymore. You had Christmas, that's it. Fucking bullshit, man. I'm having a big party, a big birthday party. Trust me. Put my kid on the farm, rave it up. You want to come? I'd love to come. I'll work there if you want because I owe you a favour, obviously. Oh, yeah. Actually, did Nicole tell you? What? You got this bill today. Okay. Yeah, you got it? <laughs> you got it? I can't hear you. You have to say yes. That, if, is that part of my uh, losing the bet to you? How you can lose the bet? Yeah, you can have, do, how do you want to re repay your bet? I'll, I'll repay it how we agreed to pay it. But I have you, you, everything I ask you to do, you say no. I ask you to pay this bill, you say no. I ask you to pick me up from my house, you say no. So you just shoving me in the backside, bro. I'm not happy with that. Anyway, to those people who watch this channel, this man lost a bet and he's not honoring his bet. When did we have that bet? This, ta this time last A few months ago. I have not honored it. I'm just saying to you that I've, um, I'll agree to what we first agreed to. Yeah, I, I figure, do you want to come and clean my pool? No, go. Yeah, show me what to do, I'll clean it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Come to, actually, you know, I can come and plant my, my go, I bought some trees, so come and plant them. Show me what to do, I'll do it. When are you going to come? After New Year. We said this year, though. We bet last year. We bet this year. No, we didn't bet this year. Did we not? No, it was last year. All right, okay. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. It was last year, bro. I'm telling you, man. You're just trying to mess with me. BDOs. It was a good fight, though, wasn't it? Did you enjoy it? Absolutely. Yeah. What was the scorecards, anyway? Um, I can get the scorecards up, official scorecards. One second, I'll get them up. Derek, you you won the bet. I owe you a bet. It's fair. it's it's all good. Like you haven't got to look up dates and stuff. I'm just saying to you, it's like six six to eight days till the end of the year. That's all I'm saying. You know why? Yeah, I wish you was here. I'd have shown you. I'd have shown you. There's a picture of Nicole at Carnival. I'd have shown it to you. <laughs> Can I show it to your fans? What are you going to show me? Nicole's picture at Carnival. Nicole! Is she there? No, she's not here. She's... <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's... No, let's not show that. Let's not show that. Right, okay. okay. Um, can I can I just answer your question, Derek? Yeah. Scorecards: one fourteen, one twelve, one fifteen, one ten, and one fifteen, one uh, one eleven, all in Parker's favour. One. One fourteen, one twelve, yeah. one fifteen, one ten. Which one are people arguing about? They're talking. They're saying the one fourteen, one twelve, one was too close, um, which was obviously Parker's card. Too close to... They're saying that it should have been wider. Do 
shouldn't be one. Who cares? You know, some of these judges, you know, they, I think they should be checked the eyesight. How young are they are? You know, but it is what it is. Let me just ask you one more question before I let you go. Did you see Anthony Joshua's post uh, to you? He, I, I, I saw it in someone else's post, but yeah, what's up? It was a good post, yeah. Just for people that haven't seen it, Joshua posted yesterday with uh, the Rock Heroes music and going from Hotel California. This is my OG. He, lead, he led and leads the way. He's a motivation force for myself and young boxers coming through the ranks. It's important to honour our people while they are still here. That was a post from Anthony Joshua. Yeah, that was beautiful. Thank you very much, brother. I really appreciate it. Listen, nobody fights like me. Nobody fights like me. You know, I think the young, the young fighters now, they're more worried about winning. You know, it's, it's about it's about winning the right way. If you're losing, you lose the, the the right way, not the wrong way. I love fighting. I enjoy it. That's all I can say, man. I enjoy it. Nothing else. I enjoy it. Wake up in the morning. I left the arena with my eyes swollen and everything. Next morning. She was all gone, boy. I enjoy it. I don't. I don't get scared. I enjoy it. I ain't scared of nobody. Okay. Well, Derek, listen. I appreciate your time here today, as always. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll see after the new year what's obviously next for you. But you seem like you're in a. Visually, you seem like you're in a good place. I don't know about in your head, so we'll see what <laughs> we'll see what happens come 2022. It's be empty, the right on this side is be empty here, but yeah, on this side it's okay. <laughs> Listen uh, to all your fans. Your you said how many people you got? About a billion people going through. Well, nearly closing on a billion views. Are you? Nine hundred sixty million. Jesus Christ, congratulations. To all those 963, I appreciate you supporting this man. Um, and thank you very much for supporting me and all the other fighters. Uh, you know, we appreciate it so much. And I hope next year will be a better year for everybody. You know, even to the guys drug dealing, uh, to the thieves, to everybody. I hope the next year will be better for everybody. You know, because this year and last year, been shit. You know one thing I realized about this government? They open and then they close. You know, they're like, it's, just, it's just weird. So I uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much for supporting us. And Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy yourselves, your family this year. Um, and um, I will see you next year in the summer, bitches. Because I'll be back. As a Terminator said, I'll be back. Oh. You might see me in Creed. What? Huh? What? You might see me in Creed. Oh, the new Creed film? Yeah. I'll be carrying Tony's bag. Oh, Joe. Terry Cesaro, thank you very much. Talk to Eiffel TV. And uh, yeah, that tickled me, that absolutely did. And uh, we'll catch up with you after the new year. Thank you very much. <laughs> Peace out.